What is going on? How are you today? Steve here, and in this video, I'm going to be answering your workout questions. So let's get into it. Before we get into it, if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. I'll wait. If you're not new here, you know this is, of course, Workout Wednesday. For this week, like my Mindset on the Move video, I will be answering questions from Cora. Cora is an online website where you can log on, create a profile, and just ask people questions. I've tailored my profile to be about fitness, so I get fitness questions. On Monday, I did a Mindset on the Move video answering mindset questions from Cora, and I hope to do a Food Friday video on that as well. Let's start with an easy one. What's your at-home workout split? I've gone through this in a previous video. I'm currently doing a six day a week split. So legs push pull twice with one rest day. In the video, I also went through how to structure any program you want to make yourself and went through all the details of that split. So if you want to check that out, work away. Next up, is a 500 pound deadlift impressive? Yeah. What's that, like 225, 226 kg? That's heavy, that's, that's some good weight. If you can lift 500 pounds with perfect form, awesome. That is absolutely impressive. I find a lot of young lifters start out wanting to lift a certain number, wanting to bench 100 kg or wanting to squat 100, 200 kg or whatever. And when they don't hit that target fast enough, they become disheartened. So I find that instead of saying like, is this number impressive or should I hit this number? It should be more about your technique, your form, how well you're lifting. If I see a new lifter in the gym who is deadlifting with perfect form, I'm going to be much more impressed than if he's lifting 225 kg with a rounded back, pulling completely arseways and about to injure himself. It also, I suppose, depends on your weight. If, like me, you weigh like 140 pounds and you're deadlifting 500 pounds, you're a superhuman. Today I'm rocking a nice snort face half zip. You know, if you want to pick one of these up, you Get your ass down to the store and buy it yourself because I don't have discount codes. I'm not sponsored by North Face. Anyone from North Face, if you're watching, I pretty much just exclusively wear your clothes. So, you know, let's let's be friends. Let's, let's talk about this. Next up is a question that I get fairly regularly um, and from girls mostly. It's to do with your waistline and your obliques. So... Will doing hanging ab exercises make my waist look bigger because it's working my obliques? So there's a couple of things with this question I want to kind of go into. First of all, hanging exercises, when you're hanging off a pull-up bar, um, they don't necessarily target your obliques. They usually target your lower abs because bottom-up movements, such as hanging knee raises, hanging leg raises or whatever, they target your lower abs. It's the top-up movements like sit-ups or crunches that target your upper abs, and then it's anything to do with twisting usually involves your obliques. So if you're doing a hanging movement where you're doing like leg windscreen wipers, that's an oblique exercise. Or if you're doing knee raises but twisting halfway up, that's an oblique exercise. You can do the same if you're on the floor doing a sit up with a twist or Russian twists or anything like that. They're all oblique focused. Just because you're hanging doesn't mean you're targeting your obliques. Second of all, I don't know why this is a misconception but it is. When you're working your obliques, you are not making your waist bigger. If anything, it would make your waist smaller. I find girls especially tend to think that when they're working a muscle, they're just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. If that's how it worked, that would be fantastic for every bodybuilder ever. You should think about targeted exercises like for the obliques, that the muscle isn't getting bigger as such. The fat is reducing and the muscle is tightening up. So your waist will actually become smaller when you're doing core exercises or oblique targeted exercises. As your muscles develop and tone up, everything will get tighter it'll contract a bit more you'll get that flat stomach and those defined obliques that you're looking for but your waist won't get bigger so again just because you're hanging doesn't mean you're working your obliques and if you're working your obliques they're not going to get bigger they're going to tone up and get tighter which exercise is better bench press or overhead press that's kind of apples and oranges because they work different muscle groups you can't necessarily say bench press is better than overhead press now I prefer bench press to overhead press because my shoulder mobility is pretty shit, but that doesn't mean I don't do overhead press, or it doesn't mean I focus on bench rather than overhead press. These are two great compound lifts that everyone should be doing, things like bench press, overhead press, squat, deadlift, any of those compounds that you kind of need to structure your program around, you should be doing all of them. But is one better than the other? Not necessarily. Bench press is more about the main pectoral muscles with a little bit of tricep activation, but with overhead press it's 
all delts, it's shoulder pressing. It's a vertical press versus a horizontal press. These are different movements and target different muscle groups. One isn't better than the other. Should I use incline or flat bench? Do both. For all around chest development, you need to be doing both flat and incline bench with barbells or dumbbells. Depending on your own preference, some people prefer dumbbells to barbells because they get a, a bigger stretch at the bottom and they get a bigger range of motion. Where the barbell restricts your range of motion with your chest, the dumbbells can go slightly more and get a bigger stretch and a bigger range of motion. But returning to which one you should do, you should be doing both. Can I strength train on imp? Can I strength train? Can I strength train? I can't say strength train. Can I strength train on an empty stomach a few hours before eating? Yeah, you can. Working out fasted is a personal preference. Uh, some people can do it, some people can't. You see people like Christian Guzman who train at stupid o'clock in the morning and just barely eat before they go in. It just suits his lifestyle. He's busy. He needs to get it done before he goes into work and goes through the day. If you work out in the early mornings and you want to get your workout out of the way before your first meal, that's perfectly fine. If you are someone who can't function without food, some people feel faint, they feel dizzy, they can't get a good session in, then I wouldn't recommend that you do fasted workouts. Personally, I do a fasted core and cardio session every morning. Some people believe it's of benefit for fat loss. I don't know how beneficial it is, but I just do it because I can get my workout in before my first meal and not break my fast too early. Because I do intermittent fasting, I try and get my workout in while I'm fasted and then get my first meal around one o'clock in the day. So I have a fairly big chunk of a morning to use up before I can eat. So I like to use that space up by working out. But ultimately, yes, it is a personal preference. If you can train fasted and you want to get a morning session in before your first meal, absolutely work away. If you feel you can't function without food or you feel faint or your workout is diminished by not having food, then don't do it. It's just not worth it. How can I effectively do a simple pull up? I tried, but I could not. So pull ups are all about technique. Strength is like a skill you can learn. I usually try and equate it almost to a language. First you learn basic vocabulary, then you learn verbs, then you learn things like tenses, past, present, then you learn how to structure sentences, and then you can speak the language. It's the same idea with strength, things like pull-ups. It's a progression. To keep running with that language metaphor, your words are your negative reps. So you get up on a step, you get your chin over the bar, and you just slowly lower yourself down. You fight the negative motion, you get back up on the step, same thing again. Once you get more comfortable with controlling the negative, then you move on to the next step in the progression, learning the verbs of the language. You start learning the form of a pull-up with less weight. So you use things like resistance bands, or if gyms are open where you are, you get on an assisted dip or assisted pull-up machine, where you can take some of your body weight away. So you can do the pull-up form with less of your body weight. If you have a thick resistance band that you can hook your foot through and take some of your weight, you can work on your form that way. Same thing with the assisted machines, you put your knees up on the pads and you take some of your weight depending on how much of the stack you want to add in as a counterbalance. You can then take the words and the verbs and structures you learned and start progressing onto the sentences and actually speaking the language. You can progressively take away more and more weight until you're supporting your own body weight in a pull-up. At that point you'll be able to do a simple pull-up with your own body weight. Progress from negatives to assisted to a simple pull-up. For those of you who are looking for something more advanced, just because you can do pull-ups does not mean you stop progressing. You know, you might be able to do 10, 15, 20 pull-ups. If you want to progressively overload the movement and keep progressing in pull-up form and pull-up strength, add weight. Put on a weighted vest or attach some chains to a weighted belt. Stick to your form, stick to your basics, add weighted pull-ups into your gym program. Just because you can do pull-ups doesn't mean you stop progressing or doesn't mean you just keep adding reps until you can do 100 pull-ups. That may be no good to you. If you want to continue to progress and continue to build muscle, you need to progressively overload the muscle with more weight. What are good ab workouts for teenagers? There's no specific ab workouts that are directly for teenagers. What I usually recommend is finding an ab workout that is all-inclusive. So it targets your upper, lower, and obliques. I have one on my channel. You don't have to use that one. It's a good start. It's structured to hit all the parts of your abs, but you can use any of them on YouTube or ask anyone in a gym to help you out if you're confused. As long as you get movements that are top up to target your upper abs, bottom up, so leg raises and things like that to target your lower abs, and like we talked about earlier, if you want to hang and target your obliques with a twisting motion, that's another great thing to add in. Regardless of your age, whether you're a teenager or not, your ab workout should be all-inclusive or comprehensive, that it hits all areas of your six-pack and obliques, 
and overall strengthens your core and helps build your compound movements over time. I find with a lot of these questions like ab workouts for teenagers, they're looking for a quick fix to get a six pack. There's no specific workout or specific number or target that you need to hit. If I say you need to do 347 and a half sit ups a day and then you'll have a six pack, it doesn't work like that. Six packs come from your diet. If you have a comprehensive ab workout that you do consistently over time, that will build up your core, build up the muscle. You can then reveal your abs in the kitchen using a caloric deficit diet. If you want to get involved with this week's Q&A sessions, I will be posting questions on my Instagram. So if you haven't followed the account yet, I'll link it here. Go check it out, drop a follow. Keep an eye on the stories. I'll be putting out question and answer boxes that you can get your questions answered in this week's video. If you got value from this video, make sure you drop it a like. And as always, please, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.